I'll let you into a secret. Well, that's got your attention, hasn't it? We like secrets. When we first got married, uh, my wife and I used to uh, do quite a bit of uh, uh, walkings before the family came uh, along and the hill walking sort of got went onto another part of our lives. And uh, I was very intent that if we were doing a walk, we went from A to B as quickly as possible. And Sheila said, well, why don't we stop and look at this? No, 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 we've got to get to B by such and such a time. And over time, we managed to find a compromise. That So we always arrived at B, but we always had an opportunity to have a look around at the landscape that we were in. And in a sense, the last six, seven months, um, while we've been uh, undertaking this great journey in church, we've been going from A to B. We've had a lot of markers on the way at Christmas, Easter, Pentecost, Trinity Sunday, and, and so on. But now we've hit this thing that we call ordinary time. And you can tell we're in ordinary time because we're in green. My time here has not been vain. We're in green. And it's as though suddenly the landscape opens up. We're not directed quite so much towards specific ways of understanding or being or walking with Christ. If you like, we've got time to relax, to open ourselves up, and to look at the landscape. Now, the road that Jesus treads in this time is one in which he encounters many people. And over the next few months, our guide will be uh, St. Luke. And St. Luke is very much a people's person, very interested in the healing of Christ, the preaching of Christ, the seeking God, the one who comes to find us and encounter us. And we have one such encounter in our Gospel today, and it's really unusual. And it's unusual because Jesus is surprised. Very, very few instances of Jesus being surprised in the Gospel. But here, the Gospel says not only is he surprised, he's astounded. And why is he astounded? Well, he's been working with the Jewish people, with his disciples, and frankly, finding it a bit of a hard sell. When along comes a foreigner, a member of the Roman occupation, and says, or sends a message and says, could you do this for me? My slave is ill, he needs healing. His path is paved by a few of the Jewish people locally who give a good character to this man. Okay, he's a Roman centurion, but he is sympathetic to our cause and has even paid for a synagogue to be built. Jesus goes, he goes to meet this guy and to heal this slave, but on the way there's a message. And the message is, look, this is who I am. I'm a soldier. I talk bluntly. I follow orders. And when somebody says to me, do this, I go and do it. And I know that you, in whom I have heard the rumour of the presence of God, that you can do the same. You don't need to be here. You can command something and it will happen. And there is Jesus' astonishment a foreigner, a Roman soldier, a member of the occupying forces, gets who he is. This man understands the nature of his ministry. This man understands that he is the image of the living God here on earth. And this man understands that he can do stuff. 
And Jesus is astonished. Such direct and plain faith is a revelation to him. He never meets a centurion, he never meets a centurion slave, but when they go back, that slave is cured. And Jesus goes on his way. And I wonder for us if we were to be very direct in our prayers to God, whether we would be bold enough to say, well God, this is who I am. This is what my life is like. These are the things that hold me where I am. But I have trust in you that you can do anything with what I have and what I have to offer and what I desire. It's very direct. God does understand who we are, where we're coming from, what things are important to us, and what we need. And he doesn't need us to wrap that up in lots of flowery language, which we sort of get from all our memory of church in the past. He doesn't want us to wrap it up in lots of words. This story, this encounter, points us to a very direct relationship with God and asks us to think very carefully about who we are, what is important to us in relationship to our lives, to our community, to the world, and how we place that into God's holding. That's key to any relationship we have. But I wonder if we were able to do that, whether God would be astonished at our directness and our boldness. But we have plenty of precedents in the Old Testament to draw upon. If you read many of the Psalms, you will find there a very direct approach to God. They don't mince their words. They say, God, get your finger out and do this. Why are you, whoops, why are you messing around doing that? When what we need is this. And if you look at the prayers of the prophets, they are very direct. Jeremiah says, look, forget it. I'm too young to do this. Too inexperienced. What the hell are you playing at? But God says, no, 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 I know. I know what is there. I know what you can do. Get on and do it with me walking beside you. So as we walk this path with Christ, and as we encounter many people over the next few months, let's open ourselves to a very direct approach to Christ to Christ who comes seeking us, to Christ who comes telling us his stories, to Christ who longs to bring us his healing. And as he is direct with us, so let us be direct with him. Let us focus our prayers on what is truly needful, not flowering them up, but saying to God, here I am, this is who I am, this is what I need, this is what I pray for. And let's also have the trust to believe that God will answer our prayers. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.